I read that and I think of some of the reports that I wrote when I was in junior high. <laughs> this is a book report about the life of Jesus. <laughs> but I want to take you back a little before then. Do you remember the first day that you went to school? That day when you entered a classroom and saw a bunch of kids that you didn't know and a teacher who was probably there at the front door welcoming you? Do you remember going to your desk and sitting in your chair waiting for your journey in education to begin? Probably not. But it was a major, momentous event in your life when you suddenly understood that something big was happening in your life. And you know, there are, are so many first times that happen in a lifetime. The first day of college, the first day of your first job, the first day of your married life together. Those days sneak up on you quietly and then suddenly you're on your way. And we have no way of knowing what that first day will lead to. For some of us, that first day of elementary school led to a lifetime of learning in a classroom, taking you further and further up the educational ladder. And for others, it was the beginning of the preparation for a future occupation, or perhaps the place where you met your future spouse or best friend, or a teacher who would inspire you the rest of your life. Your entire life's adventure. We never know how those first steps and where they will take us in life. Those first steps are so important, and yet we can only say, and so it begins. Of course, there are so many beginnings, new starts that will lead us to new adventures and new directions, and, and no one can tell us where we will go or what we will do. It's a little bit like Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. We wonder, what might have happened if only we had... And yet, for those of us who grew up as Presbyterians, we always have the feeling that whatever our choices, God will use us to accomplish the purposes that are part of God's plan. And something that Marvin didn't mention about Ike is that, did you know he was a Presbyterian? Yeah. And I wonder what he did as a child and how he grew and what things he decided. I wonder, as his father said, stand up for yourself, that he would be giving that advice to a general who would lead the American forces and eventually the Allied forces, all in one beginning. Kind of interesting. We never know what purpose we seek to fulfill. And yet, here in Mark's Gospel, we see in just those few verses the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. As I said, it, it comes almost as a run-on sentence. Mark hardly leaves room for a breath as he moves from leaving Nazareth to the temptations, to the baptism, the temptations, the, the 40 days in the wilderness, the arrest of John the baptizer, and suddenly the ministry in Galilee. In that brief paragraph, he puts all of that together. We get no sense of the passage of time, except perhaps for the 40 days. Everything else could have happened in just a matter of days or even a week or two. But Mark is really interested in telling us about the process of that start. And, and even more interestingly, he tells us what the message of Jesus was as he went out and preached. He tells us that Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Of all the things that I think about Jesus doing, I rarely think about what he was preaching, what he was telling people as he traveled through that territory of Galilee. And yet, here we have the message. The kingdom of God is near, the time is fulfilled, repent and believe. Pretty simple, pretty short sermon. And all the rest was stuff that was used to explain what the kingdom was like. And yet, if you think about that being his core message, 
Wherever he went, he would preach it. One wonders why that core message was such a problem for the religious leaders that were there around him who got so upset with his message. I mean, calling for repentance doesn't sound particularly dangerous, and yet they felt threatened. And maybe it was the first part of the message that was so threatening. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. It kind of suggests that a time of judgment is coming quickly and that people need to take this message to heart. That could be a threatening message to think that the kingdom is at hand. People might begin their journey and make it their own as they seek to discover the mysteries of God, to find a, a way to worship and be involved in things. And, and those who control the religious setting of the day at the temple and society were not really providing much that was very satisfying to the people. And perhaps they were acting even a little bit ungodly. It would never do to live that kind of ministry as Jesus went about his journey around Jerusalem. During this Lenten season, you and I are invited to accompany Jesus to the events that are coming. Events that will lead to Palm Sunday and Holy Week, to Good Friday and then to Easter. And while we make that journey, we're invited to see how we will react to those events, how we will respond to the message that tells us the kingdom of God is at hand, because this is the journey that lies ahead. And whether we decide to make that journey or to sit at home and to decide how deeply that journey will ultimately affect us, that becomes part of our travel through this Lenten season. And so, as Mark might say, and so it begins. Let us prepare ourselves. Will you join me in prayer? Eternal and all-powerful God, you know us, you watch over us, you keep us guided and led. And as we enter this season of Lent, we often think about the things that we might give up for Lent, but perhaps it'd be more important for us to think about the things that we need to pick up, the things that we need to carry with us as we think about what Jesus is going through for our sake. Watch over us, O oh God, as we journey to Jerusalem. In Jesus' name, amen.